Welcome to the demonstration on format preserving encryption and pseudonymization in FieldShield. The IRI FieldShield is a powerful program used for protecting sensitive data and personally identifying information at the field level. This can be done with multiple techniques in one pass through the data. Among those techniques are format preserving encryption and pseudonymization. The benefit of these particular functions is that their outputs retain the look and feel of the original values. Encryption encodes data so that only those who are authorized can read the data. The plain text data is encrypted using an encryption algorithm, and that data can only be read when the data is decrypted. When using format preserving encryption, the encrypted field will usually look as if the values in the field are real. At the very least, the values will be in a format consistent with the original format. Pseudonymization will take the values from an input field and randomly select from those values to replace the original values in the records. At the same time, a restore file is created so that the original values can be restored for all the records. In order for this technique to be reversible, the values for the fields that are to be pseudonymized must be unique. This demo will use the IRI Workbench to create a FieldShield job script in the FieldShield language that uses format preserving encryption and pseudonymization techniques to protect various fields that are in the file pseudo.dat. Then the job script can be run from the Workbench or from a batch job. After that, we will create the job to return the data to its original form. Before starting, be sure to either make or highlight the project where your work will be saved. Our project is FieldShield Pseudo FP Encrypt. Click on the arrow next to the FieldShield icon on the toolbar. Select New Protection Job. In the Job Specification File window, type in sudo and Workbench will add .fcl to the script name. Be sure that the Create Script radio button is selected. Click Next to go to the Data Sources window. On the right, select Add Data Source. This takes you to the Data Source window. Select the File Radio button. Click on the File Browse button. Select the file sudo.dat. Notice that the file we selected is now in the File field. Click OK to return to the Data Sources window. The tree in the Data Sources box on the left has the name of the file we just selected for the in file. We now need to define the input fields. I previously created a metadata file that defines the input fields. Select Add Existing Metadata on the right to go to the Open Metadata window. In the Matching Items box, select sudo.ddf. Click OK. You first have a pop-up where you click Yes if you want to copy the fields into the script. Go ahead and click Yes. If you click No, a reference to the DDF file will be added to the job script. In the Data Sources box on the left, you can see the field names listed. Click Next to go to the Data Targets window. On the right, select Add Data Target to go to the Data Target window. Select the File Radio button and type in the file name sudo.out. Click OK to return to the Data Targets window. On the right, select Target Field Layout to go to the Target Field Layout window. At the top half of the screen is the field definitions for the input source that was defined by the metadata file. The bottom half is for the field definitions for the output target. Initially, all the field definitions are copied from the source to the target. We can now apply protection rules to the fields. First, let's apply a pseudonym to the field LName. Right-click on that field. Select Edit. This brings us to the target field pop-up. Field name should contain the name of the field where we want to apply the pseudonym. In this case, the field is called LName. Select the Pseudonymize and Restore tab. Now select the radio button for Create a Pseudonym field. Click the Browse button next to the Restore File Directory box. Select the directory for the project, then click OK to return to the target field window. Notice that the full path is now in the Restore File directory box. 
Click the Create Restore File button. The pseudonym lookup file and the restore lookup file are now created and have been placed in the directory that we indicated in the restore file directory box. Click OK to return to the target field layout screen. Notice that in the field column, the field designation has been changed to set and the field name has been changed to pseudo underscore lname. In the Additional Attributes column, the pseudonym lookup set file has been named with its path. Now we want to apply format preserving encryption to the fields phone and email. Right click on the field phone. Select Apply Rule and Create Rule. Select Encryption or Decryption functions under Protection Rules. The library location box will contain the name of our project. You can select a different project that is from this workspace for the library from the drop-down if you want the rule to be put in the library of a different project. The rule name box contains the name Encryption Rule. Click Next to go to the Encryption and Decryption Functions window. Since phone is all numbers and we want to keep the dashes, select ENC underscore FP underscore AES 256 underscore alpha num. This encryption function will only replace alphabetic and numeric characters. We will give a file name that contains the passphrase. The passphrase is used as the basis for the encryption. Type in the file name phrase.txt in the passphrase box. This way, the passphrase will be in the file and not viewable in the job script. There are no characters that we wish to have excluded from use in the encryption. Click Finish to return to the target field layout window. In the field column, the field designation has been changed to function enc underscore fp underscore aes256 underscore alpha num and the field name has been changed to enc underscore fp underscore phone. Now we will apply the same encryption rule to the field email. Right click on the field. Select apply rule and browse rule to go to the field rule library pop-up. The library location box contains the name of our project. The box below that contains the name of any protection rules that were previously defined for the project. And the detail column contains the definition in the field shield scripting language that is used to apply the protection. Click on encryption rule. Click OK to return to the target field layout screen. The line for the field email has been changed in the same way that the line for phone was changed. Click OK to return to the Data Targets window, where the tree in the Targets box contains the fields that were defined. Click Finish. The job script sudo.fcl has now been created and placed in the project, and is also displayed on the screen. It contains the field shield commands that we created using the field shield new protection job wizard. Notice that the in file and out file reference a flat file, but these could just as easily reference a table in a database. The output fields contain the field definitions for the fields that were copied from input to output. The fields that had protection functions applied have the new field names with the syntax for applying the protection functions. Run this script by right clicking in the script and selecting Run as IRI job. The output file sudo.out will appear in the project. Double click on that file to display it. You can see the protections have been applied. In the LNAME field, the names have been scrambled. The values for the field phone have been encrypted in such a way that the values still look like phone numbers. Values for the field email have been encrypted so that the values are in a form similar to email addresses. At some point, you may want to reverse the protections so that you can see and use the real data. 
We can do that by creating a new script that will restore the original values for LNAME and will decrypt the values for the fields phone and email. At some point, you may want to reverse the protections so that you can see and use the real data. We can do that by creating a new script that will restore the original values for LNAME and will decrypt the values in the fields phone and email. Click on the arrow next to the field shield icon on the toolbar. Select New Protection Job. In the Job Specification File window, type in sudo restore and Workbench will add the .fcl to the script. Be sure that the Create Script radio button is selected. Click Next to go to the Data Sources window. On the right, select Add Data Source. This takes you to the Data Source window. Select the File Radio button. Click on the File Browse button. Select the file that was created in the previous script. That file is sudo.out. Click OK to return to the Data Sources window. We now need to define the input fields. We can use the same metadata file that we used in the previous script because the fields are in the same positions in the data file. Select Add Existing Metadata on the right to go to the Open Metadata window. In the Matching Items box, select sudo.ddf. Click Yes to copy the fields into the script. Click Next to go to the Data Targets window. Select Add Data Target to go to the Data Target window. Select the File Radio button and type in the file name sudo underscore restore dot dat. Click OK to return to the Data Targets window. On the right, select Target Field Layout to go to the Target Field Layout window. First, let's restore the original LNAME value. When the pseudonym values were created, a set file was created that could be used to restore the values. That file is the one that has a name with 12 digits and then underscore LNAME underscore restore dot set. Right-click on the field LNAME. Select Edit. This brings us to the target field pop-up. Field name should contain the name of the field where we want to undo the pseudonym. In this case, the field is called LNAME. Select the Pseudonymize and Restore tab. Now select the radio button for Select Restore Lookup File. Click on the Browse button next to the Lookup File box. Double-click on the Restore Set File. The path and name for the Restore file has been placed in the Lookup File box. Click OK to return to the Target Field Layout window. In the Field column, the field designation has been changed to Set, and field name has been changed to Restore underscore LNAME. In the Additional Attributes column, the Restore Set file has been named with its path. Now we want to decrypt the fields phone and email. Right-click on the field phone. Select Apply Rule and Create Rule. Select Encryption or Decryption functions under Protection Rules. For the rule name, type in Decrypt Rule. Click Next to go to the Encryption and Decryption functions window. You must select the decryption function that is the same type as was used for the encryption function, and you must use the same passphrase. Select DEC underscore FP underscore AES256 underscore alpha num and type in the name for the passphrase file. That name is phrase.txt. Click Finish to return to the target field layout window. In the field column, the field designation has been changed to function DEC underscore FP underscore AES256 underscore alpha num. And the field name has been changed to DEC underscore FP underscore phone. Now we will apply the same decryption rule to the field email. Right click on the field email. Select Apply Rule and Browse Rule. Select the rule named Decrypt Rule. Click OK to return to the Target Field Layout window. The email field has been changed in a manner similar to the phone field. Click OK, then click Finish. The job script sudo restore.fcl has now been created and placed in the project. It is also displayed on the screen. Run the script to create the data file sudo underscore restore.dat.
When you compare the files sudo.dat and sudorestore.dat, you can see that they are the same. We have created and run two field shield job scripts using the IRI workbench. The first applied pseudonyms to the values in the field L name. The values in this field are last names and the replacement values look like last names. Applied a format preserving encryption function to the fields phone and email. Phone actually looks like real phone numbers. Email has the form of an email address but does not look like real email addresses. The second job script was created to undo the above protections so that the original field values are restored. FieldShield also makes it possible to protect multiple tables at once using common rules while maintaining referential integrity. This is covered in a different video. Thank you for watching the Format Preserving Encryption and Pseudonymization demonstration. For more information, you can visit us on the web at www.iri.com.